Hello and welcome to Diecast Restos. My name's Jason and this is the 14D ESO Grifo. Introduced in 1968, replacing the Lomas Ambulance, which was my very first restoration. It was given the super fast wheels in 1969 with a new base plate and continued until 1974. It would later make a reappearance as a Super GT model in the mid 1980s with the doors cast shut, a plastic base and a blacked out window. The model also bore no reference to the Grifo. So you can see here that this model I've picked up has been well modified, not in the best terms either. There's this putty on the base that might indicate it might have been stuck down to something that will need removing. Hopefully it's not obscuring anything or holding in the axles perhaps. I do have two models, this one in a lot better condition than the other. Still it's very scratched up, but it doesn't need any replacement parts so I'll just give this one a new coat of paint and the usual buffing up polishing treatment. And here you can see the headlights and the grille which are cast into the base. And that's what the base should look like on the non super fast version. So hopefully it looks the same underneath that blue crud. So it's got some double sided tape of some description stuck to the front end. The roof has this sticker attached and some of the rear window as well. So hopefully that's not hiding anything or too difficult to remove. Here's that base once again and the two models alongside one another. First up I needed to get rid of this whatever it was. Luckily it chipped away, it dried so much that it easily came off using a screwdriver. And I was pleased to see that there was no damage to the base plate, so no revealed holes or problems with the axles. And then I can move on to the other end, hopefully the same result again, and oh, sure enough, yeah, looks good. You can see the little A marking there on the back. And now for my favourite bit, removing all of the other rubbish that's been attached to it. So here I'll peel away that tape, and it's very sticky residue left over there. Hopefully that'll all come off in the caustic soda. And then I turn my attention to removing the sticker from the roof. But yeah, that looks actually pretty good. Um, some more residue. The back window has got some sticky residue as well. So hopefully those sticker marks will come off with a bit of work with some polish. Inside there's a bit of paper as well, so I'll get this out. Just grab my screwdriver again to prod it away. See what it reveals. So it looks very yellowed. It looks like it might be a newspaper cutting looking at the font there. Um, it says mail, so it may well be a piece of the Daily Mail. And on the back there, having a little bit of a look. See if there's anything. There's a bit of a gift. Oh, that looks like a date. Is that 19, 1971? Is that a B at the end? Might have been February 1971, I don't know. Anyway, I'll remove the wheels from the axles and then remove the base. Then the interior can pop out, looking really quite grubby. That'll need a good clean up with some soap and water. These models most commonly came with a pale blue interior. There are some white, very rare variations. And the interior also acted as a suspension piece for the front end, but not the back end. Here I'll just remove the doors with that little leaf spring holding them in place. I'll remove that with some needle nose pliers. So the windscreen does pop out on this one. They hadn't flattened the rivet so that was easy enough to pop out. And after tapping it, I have all of the component parts here. As I mentioned earlier, the model did come as a Super GT in the mid 80s and in my personal collection I've got a couple of them. One in this sort of lime green colour and another in yellow. But you can see the obvious copy of the die. 
The base here is plastic and the lights have been replaced. It's very low detail. And Super GTs are just sort of like a mid 80s reproduction using cheaper plastics and black windscreen. It's evidently the same model, especially considering the rear registration mark, but there's no reference to the Esogrifo name. So into my heatproof bowl, I will pop in some hot water and leave it to the caustic soda to do its work. The Grifo was an Italian Grand Tourer manufactured by Iso Autovicoli, who were the original manufacturers of the Isetta bubble car. The company went bankrupt in 1974 and the Grifo was produced from 1963 until the bankruptcy. 413 Grifos were produced in this time and they had a range of American engines originally using a 5.4 litre Chevy V8, later a 5.8 litre Ford Boss 351 V8 and then on to a 7 litre and 7.4 litre Chevrolet V8 again in the later days. The car was designed by famed auto designer Giorgetto Giugiaro at Batoni and in 1970 the car received a styling update with a sleeker front end with the hideaway headlights. Now I'll lay down some of the Tamiya fine surface primer in light grey. And we're finally starting to see this casting come back to life a bit. I think this is a very realistic casting. It's good proportions, lots of nice subtle details, deep ridges on the bonnet for where the bonnet would open, and deep vents on the sides. And they really stand out with the layers of paint applied to the top of them. Of course, I need to do the same with the primer on the doors. A new paint for this one, this is the Tamiya TS19 Metallic Blue. Really love this finish. The metallic paints in the rattle cans are absolutely incredible. With the flat paints you find you have to apply three, four layers sometimes, especially the lighter colours. But with these dark metallic colours, two is absolute maximum. I could imagine one coat, if you'd covered it well, would probably do the job. As promised earlier, I'll clean up the interior using a toothbrush and some warm soapy water. And I'll also do the same with the windscreen. So now I'll just do the buffing up of the windscreen. And then to make that windscreen shine, I pop it in some wood floor polish and let it dry. Next I'll use some of my Citadel Gloss Null Oil on the tyres to make them really shine as well. And I'm using the ink from a Molotow Chrome Paint Pen on those hubs. I find direct application from the pen seems to work best here. Using a brush tends to leave some significant surface marks. And as such I will paint up that front end a little bit to make that chrome stand out. That's despite polishing it earlier. But it looks a lot better when you just give it a bit of a paint up. This is one of the models I really don't like seeing a tow hook on so I'll remove that using a hobby blade. And then tap the wheels back onto the axles, ready for reassembly. So in goes the windscreen first of all. And then the interior. After applying the doors, I couldn't film this because the footage was so poor. I did it twice and both times it just looked awful so believe me it's a tough job. Here I can reapply the base and push it down over that rear rivet. Rightio, so let's have a reminder of what we started off with. I have this peculiarly remodelled ESO Grifo with a strange sticker on the roof, a strange sticker on the front, and some old newspaper shoved in the middle. And it also came with some bonus putty blue tack stuff on the base, which luckily wasn't concealing anything. 
The paint obviously needed a refresh after removing those stickers due to that sticky residue and it's fairly chipped anyway. And the chrome work needed a bit of attention. The hubs were looking decent but needed a bit of a freshen up and we needed to remove that tow hook. So after giving me a bit of grief O, oh, this is what the grief O oh looks like now. Much, much better in this nice metallic blue. Really shines beautifully well. The windscreen polished up very nicely indeed. There's new chrome on the bumpers. Removed that horrible rear tow hook. I think this one looks a million dollars. On reviewing my footage here, I can see there's a tiny little chip where I put the door back in. So I'll give that a bit of attention. But all in all, I'm really, really happy with the transformation of this one. So stick around for the end of the video as the other model I restored, I put some custom wheels on it. They're a cheap tacky Chinese one, so I've not featured them in the video, but I thought I'd chuck them on at the end. Leaves me to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Please like, share, subscribe and comment. And I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.